This is Marcia, daughter of Varro, also named Yaya. Marcia is one of the very first known female artists of antiquity, a sculptress who specialized in engraving ivory, and a painter renowned for her portraits and self-portraits. She was born in Cyzicus in the first century BCE. Her name was mentioned for the first time by Pliny the Elder in the Natural History, written between 33-37 BCE. He noted that there was no painter superior to her for expedition in the Rome of her time. What connects me to Marcia? It's certainly more than just gender and occupation. I think this painting represents one of the key moments in the process of women breaching a restraint, namely the shame and fear of speaking about themselves and their own bodies through art. In this short visual essay, I shall discuss how I am searching for ways of representing the female body in my artistic practice by creating collections of notes concerning its various states, movements and feelings, in other words, its bodygraphy. One of my works which is rooted in the concept of the excriptive body is Book of Hours, a three-act performance art piece rooted in somatic techniques involving identifying, observing and analyzing the body's motorial patterns. I adopted this technique to the study of the exploration of my body's behaviors as it experienced the protracted pain, breathlessness and chronic fatigue that conditioned my way of function every day. In total, I collected around 65 figures, gestures and positions and they form the starting point for work on the piece. I work on the Book of Hours in collaboration with multidisciplinary artist and choreographer Kozro Adibi in August 2019 on a study stay in a 19th century building, High Green Manor in Northumberland. However, the process that eventually gave rise to the prize had begun a year earlier at High Green during my artistic residency there with visual arts in rural communities. That was when Kozro and I started workshopping together. The space where I performed Book of Hours is the manor's former bathhouse. In other words, a bedroom, an isolated place stamped with particular meanings. On the one hand, a bathroom is a sphere of cleaning and ablutions, of rituals performed privately. On the other hand, it's close to a sphere which is profoundly somatic, physiological and abject, demarcating an area for something located between subject and object, something simultaneously organic and beyond organic, animate and inanimate, something which can be extracted from the body, secreted by it, which is part of it, but a burden to it, something it reacts to it with incertitude, anxiety, relief or pain, with unconditional and instinctive behaviors, with atavism, with struggling, with casting off and even with madness. Imagine Marcia at work, studying herself in the mirror, analyzing her appearance for a moment, the proportions of her face, the setting of her eyes, the shape of her nose, lips and chin, the sculpture of her cheekbones, her complexion. Now her gaze shifts to her palate, 
She finds the colors, mixes the paints, glazes at the mirror again, turns the attention back to the panel and the lens over it. She executed several brush strokes and then her eyes is turned back towards the mirror. Marta is following her own image, tracking it, tracking herself. Her gaze is mapping out her activity, a choreography of self-observation. The word choreography derives from the Greek and combines two elements, chorea and graphy, which translate as dance and to write or writing. So choreography is not dance in itself, but a notation of dance, of the dancer's bodily movements and gestures, and of the time when they are executed. It's the art of notating, organizing and composing movement which becomes dance. When I was working on Book of Hours, I had a score for my movement. It looked like this. It notes the position of my body and its location in the space along with the timing of a movement and its tempo. As I look at this drawing, I see all of my movements executed at the same moment, simultaneously. One glance encompasses every detail apart from the emotion, intuition and tension between the body and its motion. They make the appearance when the work is performed and they are different every time. What we have here is the direct and systemic notation of my movements during one day of the coronavirus lockdown. This is the choreography of preparing three hot meals a day, laying the table, doing the washing, washing up, working at the kitchen table and cleaning up split rice milk, a mug that has fallen to the floor and the day's entire mess. And this is what the notated choreography of my gaze during a medical treatment lasting several hours looks like when reduced to a minute-long miniature. 